everyone, welcome back to Eating with the Alexanders. I'm Kel. I'm CJ. And today we are eating beignets, beignets. from Beignet Box. Yeah. With. Okay, y'all. I know y'all want to be crazy. Applesauce. I know. <laughs> I know. Before, hey, don't knock it till you try. So this is the thing. Went to a restaurant one time, had beignets served with uh, honey the first time, and it was mm -hmm. good. And then I went to another restaurant called um, Brick and Spoon. No. Went to another restaurant called Brick and Spoon. The first one was another broken egg, and they had it served with honey, and that was really good. Mm -hmm. Then had it at Brick and Spoon, and they had it served with applesauce. And I was like, why would they give me applesauce with my beignets? Mm -hmm. Because it's already sweet. Y'all. I don't know what bomb. it is. It's so good. Hey, y'all got to try It's such a good combination. Yeah, some beignets. Try some. Try some. Such applesauce. a good combination. And so then I did have it with syrup, too, from this other place called Emma's, and it was good, but... I have to have it with applesauce now. So I promise y'all it's not a pregnancy thing. Nah, we won't like it. Yeah, I got it the idea from a restaurant. And they, yeah. they, they fluffy and big. They're like, so they're good. Big, big I think too. this place is um it started out I mean of course you know beignets are like a New Orleans thing, but I think the actual company started out in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. Is that Christina Milian's company? I don't want to say the wrong thing, but I think it's her company, which started out in Los Angeles. But I think she wanted to make beignets um, because she went to New Orleans and she absolutely loved them. I don't know. My story could be wrong, y'all. I didn't research it, but I could have sworn that was the story behind the beignet box. Right. So there's a location in Los Angeles, and then there's one out here in Louisiana. And I don't know if they have any more anywhere else, but as far as I know, it's just L.A. and Louisiana, so... Right, let's say grace. All right. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today. Thank you for blessing us today and bless this food in your name. I pray. Amen. Amen. Y'all, I am so sorry. I always I get on and apologize. <laughs> I have been sick, y'all. Like, I've been so sick since like Christmas Eve. Um, we had crazy orders. We had like a lot of Christmas orders because as you guys know, we do have a baking business. And um, I don't always do personal orders because sometimes it gets overwhelming and it's just us. Um, so usually I'll supply it to like this food truck. Um, but we did personal orders and we did the Christmas trays. Maybe we can insert a picture, but we did like Christmas cookie trays. Mm -hmm. And we were busy. And like on our feet 12 hour days and, you know, still had kids to take care of. And it was a lot. It was a lot. And, um... I was really sick and from Christmas Eve to like now almost every single day I've been sick like on and off maybe with like a day here or there in between where I'm feeling okay like today I feel okay mm -hmm. but it's been rough y'all I'm sorry that's why we haven't been filming I know since I revealed mm -hmm. that we was having another boy we hadn't been on while we have done the video that's why this is good mm -hmm. I gotta try with apple sauce I'm telling y'all I don't know what it is I thought first when she was like, "Bake try it." I'm like, "Bro, that's, that's gonna be too sweet. Mm -mm. It's sweet, but it's like I don't know. They just go well together." You're not drinking anything? Why didn't you get a coffee? Mm -hmm. That would took it overload for me. Too much sweet. I couldn't. I don't know. I know a lot of people do it, but I couldn't. I have a caramel latte. Anyway, um, what were we supposed to talk about today? Definitely not politics. <laughs> What you want to talk about? Mm. Yeah, I'm so over politics right now. This is crazy. The coffee is hot. It's just crazy in the world. It is, but I want to insert that clip, <laughs> that picture. It says, who are you? Or it didn't say, who are you? It just shows, like, American citizens. So it was, like, Mr. Krabs and, um, it was a Spongebob meme. And it was Mr. Krabs and, um... Patrick fighting and then it was Spongebob looking worried and then there was like Squidward in the back just unbothered fixing his coffee and I was like well I was Spongebob but now I'm more Squidward at this point I'm over it <laughs> so so we got to insert that that was funny who do you think you would be are you worried are you unbothered what it's unbothered no I'm just because it's too much it just happened too much what? too much just, it's just too much. Just be like, here we go again. It just, it desensitizes you, like, kind of just, 
Whenever you numb to it, sometimes you be like, but it's just crazy. It's just because it's stupid, too. It's because it's stupid. What? It's just stupid. We're going to debate that all day, but like you said, power fiction is mm. I'm like, what are we being distracted from now? Anyway. <laughs> Golly, what are these kids doing? Mm -hmm. Y'all. Everybody's getting snow but us. Like, what's the deal? Are y'all getting Texas. snow? I'm well, jealous. My cousin, me and him was talking. He was like, oh, man. And him and his son went outside. He was like, oh, it's snowing. I'm like, dang, it's snowing. in San, San Antonio. You serious? Mm -hmm. I need a nap y'all. You need one? I was like, man. It's snowing in San Antonio, though. I'm like, man, that's crazy. I wish we could get something for the kids. We would like to see that, but. It's like 40. Like 45, 44 right now over here in Louisiana, but. Hmm. It just be cold. And they have light or light, a uh, little light rain, but other than well, that. Yeah, it's supposed to rain. It's snow, like, oh, it's, but it's, it's not cold kids, enough. But. Not cold enough. Maybe tomorrow it'll be, but then will it be raining? Hmm. I don't know. I know Zayden been wanting to see it. I mean, true He's snow, never but seen snow at all? I don't know. He did. But not true snow. It wasn't all that. Zayden, he, the snow he's seen, it wasn't nothing that's going to stay on the ground. Like, it's going as soon as it hits the ground. It's like, that's what we get. Mm -hmm. And it's cool, but it's like, you know, he want to play, and I understand. And like, I'm like, wow, right there in Texas, like, what, these six hours? Yeah, six hours from San Antonio, so about six hours. Dang, I wish you would come, but. I want snow. No, no. What's that, Brielle? Not yet. Thought I heard Brielle, y'all. But anyway. Um, yeah, so how have you guys been? Other than being sick on and off, we've been okay. Um, can't really complain. It's just, it's been rough. Like, as you guys know, I used to have, like, hyperemesis, gravidarum, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, for all of my other pregnancies. And this one just kind of seemed a little more promising because I didn't get as sick. But it's almost like I'm going through my first trimester again. And I do take Zofran and Diclegis and stuff like that, but... I don't know. I don't know. My mom uh, thinks, she's like, well, you got so stressed out during Christmas orders. That's what it is. I'm like, yeah, but why would it still be affecting me? You know, I just think that's just what it was going to be, you know. So I probably need to like, um, maybe build up my magnesium and stuff um, to stay on top of my supplements. <clears throat> I can always tell when I have... Um, some type of vitamin deficiency during pregnancy because I'll get this thing on my tongue where like certain foods will like burn my tongue. It's called geographic tongue or whatever, but it's weird. Like certain spots on my tongue will get really sensitive and I don't have it unless I'm pregnant, but it's usually a sign of vitamin deficiency. So I had to stay on it. Coffee not helping. Get you a coffee first though. You want some coffee? I don't drink coffee every day. I don't. It's more soothing or just something warm? Definitely more soothing because it's it sure not good for my reflux, that's for sure. <clears throat> Even though it's made with almond milk, but. Yeah, but the coffee. Mm. Ain't it? What are we talking about today, though? I don't know. It's been a long time since we talked to them, but I don't know. Hmm. Um, I'm seeing a couple questions I might have seen. I know people have been asking right, right. how things were going, yeah. and I wanted to respond, but those days I was miserable and like. I know everybody been wondering how you been doing with the pregnancy. Sick. <laughs> Other than that, everything is good. I'm like, like it's halfway baby there. Yeah. It's baby boy. Halfway there. We're at 20 weeks. Um, but I've been sick, so I'm sorry that I haven't really been responding, y'all. I don't mean to be like that because y'all know that I typically respond. I love interacting with y'all, but that's why. Um, yesterday, even just yesterday, I wasn't feeling well at all. Or day before. Day before was horrible. So, yeah. CJ has an exciting appointment <laughs> coming up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, on the 18th. Anyway, 
I got a pus. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even say. You know, he get a snip. Yes. He get a snip on the 18th. Yeah, on the 18th, man, I'm going to get snip. So I'm going to get a, a vasectomy. There you go. Um. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> you kept saying for sex to me. Tired. <laughs> I'm tired. Man. I'm in a hurry. But yeah, no. Um, I was thinking. I got an appointment. Go get a snip, snip. My aunt was like, "Go see." He gonna do what? Why couldn't you? Now you know old school. She in her seventies. Why you couldn't do something? Ma'am, I've been cut. It's going to be my fourth C-section. <laughs> my fourth cesarean. <laughs> I've done enough. No. I'm one of those people who cannot take birth control. I've tried. Can't take it. Like, the doctor literally told me you were one of the few women who cannot take birth control at all. Side effects are horrible. Just not worth it. I've tried five. So, I'm just not one of those people who can take it. And I wanted to get a tubal ligation after my second son. And the doctor was like, no. <laughs> and I was like, why? And he told me like risk and side effects and stuff like that. And so he was like, do your research. And I did. And then I talked to a very close relative of mine who had the procedure done. And they experienced everything that he said. So I was like, okay. So he mentioned to CJ that it would be easier for him to get the procedure done. And CJ was willing to do it. But I did research and I kind of chickened out. And I was like, no, don't do it. We'll try something more natural. And we did try something more natural, but... I think y'all know the whole story with the like machine with the temperature and how I sent it in for maintenance and during that time I sent it in for maintenance got pregnant. And all that. Yeah. And weaning Brielle and all that. I was weaning Brielle. Keto. I was up. on keto. Everything. I was weaning Brielle from breastfeeding. Made the ovulation later and here we are. Baby number four. Mm -hmm. While he is a blessing, we are done. Like, done, done, it's a C-section number four and I know some people have more than that but my doctor um did say it kind of gets risky after that so good. so i'm going yeah i'm mm -hmm. glad to go get it done like i said she's been through enough so it's like i'm that's nothing for me to go get that done so yeah but let go go good you guys <laughs> like good. um was that morning mm -hmm. go go good mm -hmm. doctor seems pretty cool though when i went for my consultation uh he was real cool mm -hmm. told me how everything was gonna go you know, of what it could be reversed. You know, he he brought. I had, I went there with a lot of questions, but I couldn't. I didn't even have to ask any because he literally answered everything. Because that's just how thorough. Why need to be reversed? And I, I told him, don't even. I guess you have to tell him. I'm like, you don't even. You can leave that out, Doc. He start laughing. He's like, well, you just like 34. You know, you I'm like, now we good. You said how many kids you have? Yes, I told him this would be number four. I'm like, nah. What did he say? You like, you know, y'all still no, nah, nah. I said, sir, I said, I'm sir, sorry, dog. sir. We, we no. too good. It don't have to be reverse. <laughs> nothing. Yeah. Like we're we promise we won't this won't be no uh no. I'll be there. The thing is, I didn't early. even have a chance to get baby fever again. I had just weaned one off of the breast. I didn't even get a chance to be like, oh my god, I want another baby. I didn't even get a chance. It was just like, okay, got all my workout equipment. Yeah, but I, I was like, I'm about to get fined and loop. But you don't really have baby fever like talking about. I had baby fever. After, after uh, Zayden made me a little No, I was good with one child. And then you were so like. So you baby fever that you can remember? I didn't really. <laughs> so I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> so I'm trying to tell you. trying to tell you. You had a to catch baby fever. I love baby I don't remember. I don't remember the time you was like, man, I got. I do not remember no time. I love babies, but I don't like being pregnant. I don't. I mean, because they so. If I were stuff. rich, I'd have five or six kids. If we were rich, but I wouldn't give birth to five or six kids. I would adopt so some. Frank. Yeah, I was about to say I don't remember. My body does not like pregnancy. <laughs> I don't it's like you like I got baby fever. Nah, I don't remember. Well, when your friends had uh, when your friend had his twins, and oh, I was holding him, but it was quick. and I was like, oh, <laughs> for that. Susan. And I was like, okay, let me get Mac. Let me get Mac. But that was quick. Mm -hmm. But yeah. But then we had Braille. Like that was that wasn't on purpose though. That was. <laughs> I didn't have baby fever and then say I want a baby. Let's have a baby. It uh -huh. Just, bro, yeah. just, yeah. And I know y'all been missing, but she actually sleeping. She's guys, sleeping. So, yeah, she's sleeping. Yeah, we'll have to show her next time. She's Everybody like, be like, "Where, bro? We miss hearing no, her. She's seeing a her. mess. Realism. If she was right here, I guarantee she'll be, she'll be trying to climb on on top of here. Yep. 
Hey, y'all gonna see one day. We're gonna put in a video, we try to maybe put in the middle mm -hmm. and let her, maybe in the chair. We're gonna see how we're gonna work mm -hmm. it out. Cause she gotta be in a high chair. Strap in. Yeah, cause she can't sit on one of us. She'll be climbing on this, hitting it. Oh yeah, fingers in the applesauce. Y'all. We're gonna be everywhere. She's like. That I saw a meme today and it says, the first child's always the sweetest, second child's a no limit soldier. Mm -mm. First child's chill. Xavier used to be the no limit soldier, it switched. Xavier is now the sweetest. Brielle's the no limit soldier. Brielle, she's gangster. Brielle is off the chain. Constantly testy gangster, for sure. Brielle, look, uh, you tell her, hey, don't go, don't hang off the side, don't hit, don't lean over the bed, you're gonna fall. Girl, you're gonna fall. And she'll do it. She'll anyway. keep on halfway that she almost fall, then she'll get scared and she won't, but she keep on. Oh, she's falling. She didn't went. Bloop. But there's a mat. Yeah, we got like a mat with. Mm -hmm. Pillows and stuff where sometimes there's the like a little roll out. Um, mm -hmm. like when the kids come chilling out, room mat, they kind of lay down there and chill. Can lay down on. Yeah, just, and she knows that, so sometimes she'll fall on purpose and start laughing. Like, I'm thinking she didn't hit the deck. That's all when she be doing that. I'd be like, okay, uh, Humpty Dumpty, keep playing. You didn't fail. <laughs> you didn't fail. She, she'll be leaning over, talking too. Now, nah, what is her new little thing? She do like, yeah, but she be, she be doing like she talking on the phone now. That's, mm -hmm. that's her little thing. Hello, hello, and what else? hello, hello, and what else are her um, other favorite words? I'm trying to think, daddy. <laughs> she do that, but I'm not if she want me. I uh, she be screaming, he ignores her. I'll be like, CJ, come get your daughter, please. <laughs> Don't ignore her. <laughs> I'll be at the front, maybe doing something, and she be in the room with her. It's a heater, it's a heater. Keep going on, on it. Yeah, but I prefer yeah, the cold, y'all. I don't know about y'all, but Ooh, I like I like the winter time. You like the winter? I the winter? The winter. Love the winter time. Mm. I love hoodies and sweats and just I, I love it. I only like the cold weather because it hides my fat. I know you don't like the cold. Not the summer, really. but then no. the summer. You I don't like, like summer either. I like fall. <laughs> <laughs> but so you don't I like fall and okay. Fall and spring. I like fall and spring weather. But I don't like it because of my allergies. Mm -hmm. My allergies don't like fall and spring. So, yeah. But I don't really like to be cold either. So, I say I prefer the winter because I like winter clothes. Um, I like, to, I like to wear boots. I like to be cozy. But I don't necessarily like to be cold. I mean, it's, it doesn't bother me as much as being hot, though. I hate being hot. Right. So... And I was gonna say, I think you you hate the heat more than me and Cole. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -mm. I'm a December baby. I don't like the heat. But yeah, y'all, man, it's I know it's early 2021. I know it kind of it's starting off <laughs> starting off crazy, but hey, you know. We just, Somebody said you, <laughs> 2021 is 2020 with a wig on. Bruh. It's like everybody was like well, New Year's, you know, everybody texting everybody, you know, you know, brand new year, hey, better, man, it just started off already. Just no, wild. we're gonna be positive. Yeah, we're gonna be positive though. Like I said, I, I'm saying that to say what she was about to say. I'm about to say, you know, we're just gonna be positive, stay prayed up, you know, as God to continue to protect us and love. God, as we have a great year, mm -hmm. all of us, you know what I'm saying, keep us all safe and definitely have a better year than 2020. You know what I'm saying, mentally, physically, financially, everything. So, as is the mindset, you know, we're gonna have this whole year. Baby boy coming, so. Yo, I'm still in denial. I mean, it's still, I'm not going to lie. She <laughs> doing me, y'all, and it's like, hey, hold up, man. She pregnant? Like, it's January, too. Like, I'm not going to even start like this pregnancy. It's like, I guess because we be, It's weird. It's weird. It's just that and then we be busy a lot, too. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, like I said, it's January. It's like, she having a baby in May. It's like, wow, that's like right there. We, we, them days be flying. I'm not going to lie. 2020? I mean, with all the craziness, we all know what all happened in 2020, but it flew. I'm not going to even stun. I'm like, golly. And you look at it again, we're going to be at the end of January. Boom, February. Boy, oh, my God. What's a February? You I talking said February. Bags of February. I said February. February. <laughs> I said, <laughs> all right, whatever I said, February. I'm about to say February. Y'all, like, we didn't there. buy anything for the baby. And it's not that we have a lot to buy. We don't. Right. It's just not like us to not be somewhat prepared by now. It's just different. This pregnancy like really caught us by surprise. 
Like, like really? Be, like, no, really. Like, <laughs> not just, oh, she's pregnant, but like, just everything. Like, out of nowhere, it was just like, what? Nigga, like I said, middle 2020 is like, all that's going on, we dealing with homeschooling, lockdowns, and mm-hmm. COVID, you know, it was like, wow. That's why I said it just. That was our problem. We're probably too bored. I, I know everybody say that. We were bored, but no, it wasn't. It wasn't like rabbits. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying. <laughs> I mean. Yeah, these beignets are really good. <laughs> Beignets are awesome. Yeah, these beignets. <laughs> you know what you're talking like? These beignets are really the beignets. Not the beignets. Anyway. Yeah, y'all. Maybe we was. I mean, we, everybody was born. Okay. But no, I'm just saying, no, maybe we was born. Mm-hmm. But it just took us by surprise. It took us by surprise. A lot of people, though, because you, you guys, you know a couple people, friends, mm-hmm. and a lot of people having a lot of kids. Yeah, they don't want it. Like, they, some people planned. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was done. No, some I know a couple people who they were kind of like us. They were like, "Wow, I mean, <laughs> quarantine baby." That's what they call one of my friends. He yeah. said, "Man, we had a quarantine baby, bro." It's crazy, but um, I mean, we don't really need to buy much. I mean, we have a, a kid that's like she'll still she'll still be a year old when he's here. Yeah, like we still have like all the big things. We yeah, just need just to turn buy. one in August. Yeah. You just need to buy clothes and diapers and wipes. So it's not much to even buy anyway. You know, maybe that's why we're not scrounging. Oh, we do need to buy another car seat. Mm-hmm. Or uh, can, upgrade braille. Or upgrade Maybe. braille because hers is the like extend to grow infant car seat, mm-hmm. but it lasts until two. But she's so short <laughs> that we've never even had to truly extend it. Um... But yeah, we can use that one for him. I still have the in- the infant insert. And then just buy her a bigger one. A bigger one. one. Might buy her another, um, like what Xavier used to have, a, a Kiko Next Fit. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I think yeah. it lasted a while. I think it lasted a while. Like, it went through, it expires. Um, you know, y'all know course seats expire? Yeah, dude, I was just about to say that. I literally was just about to say that. Like, I didn't know that until she told me, like, expire? Mm-hmm. What you mean? <laughs> expire? It but, expired, um, I think it was supposed to expire 2021. So Zayden had it. Car seats typically last like seven to eight years, I think. Mm-hmm. Depending on the brand. Yeah, Zayden's seven now. As long as there are no car accidents. So I think this one expired in eight years. So Zayden had it. Mm-hmm. And then um, Xavier had it. We just replaced the cover. So. We gave that away. Well, we we're gonna throw it away. If somebody wanted it, so they have another year to use it. Um, and then Riel, we'll just get her the same kind and pass the other one down to the baby. Yep. So yeah, that car seat though will last until a kid is like four, four or five, really. The one Riel got right now. Mm-mm. Oh, the uh, next fit. The next fit, yeah. So. Oh yeah, because Xavier just. He just got out of it at like it. four. We got him a booster. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he just got That's the age we got Zayden a booster too mm-hmm. at four. So, yeah. I'm sorry this video is boring, you guys. I'm so tired. <laughs> just, we just want to check in. I'm really tired. We just really wanted to we say, want to hey, let in. you guys know we're still alive and that we're okay. Right. I just haven't been feeling too good. So. I didn't know. Out of all things that she like and don't like, this is definitely one that she kind of been uh, kind of liking as of late is beignets. And I don't know, beignets. It's because not a lot of things in this pregnancy for sure. Like I, I find with this pregnancy, she, um, she like a whole lot less than the other three for some reason. Like a lot of stuff don't taste good or satisfy her. Like for mm-hmm. this pregnancy, other <laughs> ones seafood. All yeah, other ones, me. three at least you know seafood. At the mm-hmm. end of the day, you already know. Look at our video, seafood. Mm-hmm. That will always sit. I mean, like you said, you would try it coming up, maybe like a. Just to see. But you I didn't have boiled crawfish one day. Ooh. But the place yeah, like I had place. it from, yeah, like the crawfish was like, okay, just the idea of having crawfish was good. I kept it down. Like, I felt good about eating it, but I wasn't thrilled with the seasoning from that place. Like, we said, we might have said another We need video. to do an what updated, we, huh? Well, no, I'm about to say, what we don't like, especially being from Louisiana, is like, 
when they put the seasoning on top. Right. Don't put like, like when the inside the, the, the when you actually get to the meat is really nothing. No flavor. Everything is on the outside. No, this the inside will be seasoned, but then like okay, so New Orleans doesn't do that. I don't even know. I don't think Baton Rouge does that. For whatever reason, in Lafayette, sometimes they'll sprinkle the season up on the top. Not every place does that, but it's so annoying. Like, why do you have seasoning on the top? Back, when your little spot come back. And, like, y'all, the best time to get crawfish, to me, is, like, February. Girl, Mardi Gras. Oh, yeah, because, I mean, right now, I mean, you, you can get them at places, but they're going to tax you. They're still you right pretty now. small. They're small, and they're going to tax you right now. It's not that bad. About $8 a pound. Is place, it really? How many places is it? Eight. <laughs> yeah, I don't like when they sprinkle like seasoning on the crawfish. Not on top, not on top like that. Like you said, after this ball, I guess once they officially about to bag it or put it in the bag, they, they must just do like that, heavy dose of it, and then bag it. And it's like, oh, I don't like it's it. So annoying because now you have seasoning all over your hands, and then you open Mommy it. Bird it I just don't like that. Like if all the, if it's seasoned enough, if the water is seasoned enough, it's gonna. Oh, yeah, be. you don't need it. Yeah. And then that's bad for people's blood pressure too. <sighs> Yeah, a lot of people. Like, not being cooked into the food, just sprinkled on top like that. You getting that raw season, just, yeah. Yeah, so, I can't wait for my place to come back. Yeah, Rockish hole. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, I know, that's, really so, that's one of the best ones. I'm not going to The start. best I've ever had was Cajun Claws in Abbeville. Mm -hmm. And I, I went with my friend, Um, it was, she, she had done a maternity shoot that day, and I went with her to help, and her husband, like, you know, they the well, they did a maternity shoot and I was kinda like the helper. I was helping them like, you know, during the shoot. And so after that, like they treated me to like boil crawfish at this place. I kid you not, this place, like the crawfish from claw to tail was bigger than my hand. Like well my hand is small, but it's still, the crawfish, it's still mean. The crawfish was bigger than my hand. Her husband had a crawfish in his hand one time that was as long as his hand in a picture. Man, we gotta try that. It was I gotta go try it on me. Yeah. I know you like baby. It's biggest, big, you know it's good crawfish. because I took some home. Yeah, but it, I think after I ate, I was like, <laughs> I was drunk. So you know, when you got a little taste of something, it's good. Mm -hmm. And you're done. You're like, oh, man, bro. It was so good. Yeah. But now they allow takeout because of COVID. So. Oh, because it was only dining in before. It was only dining in. said, I think that's why we never went because we're like. We don't like to dine in for crawfish. We like to be in the comfort of our own home. And go to work. I mean, we didn't did it before, but like, we'd rather be at home. We yes. have our little setup and our. But, yeah, you're right. Uh -huh. You're right. And then somebody get to watch the kids. So I think that's why we just, and that's probably like, what, 30, about 30, 35 minutes. from here? 30, 35 minutes. Yeah, minute that, drive. It's that, that because, y'all, yeah, anyway, I hope we're not boring y'all to death. I'm so tired. Y'all can probably tell. Yeah, I'm sorry. We definitely go try to, we'll try to film kick another often. one, yeah. Hopefully another one in the next coming week or so. Yeah, we just wanted to show our face. Yeah, just say hey, and check say in. say hey. Hopefully, I don't look too ratchet. Y'all got any questions or, you know, anything y'all leaving the comments. You know, we definitely get in the comments and chat with you guys or address them next video or mm -hmm. something like that. Absolutely. Yeah. We should have been reading the comments before this video so we could have addressed I know. any questions. It's probably from our mm -hmm. last gender reveal. That's what I'm saying. I was trying to think. I think everybody Somebody asked if we had any names. He did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there was a name I liked, but at one point in time, he didn't like, like it. I liked the name Luca, and he didn't like it. That yeah, back then I did. But you know, she kept then, saying it, then she was saying it all together. But I liked Luca with the middle name. I'm not going to share the middle name. Right, but. But he didn't like it. But, but you now kept, you like it. When she kept saying I'm like, okay, it, it, it grew on me. It grew on me. Because, like, I'm going to be honest. like with, different. Like with Burrell, we had a couple names then. We had Burrell. Till, till she. And we had, we had Burrell, Catherine, and Navia, yeah, Catherine. Yeah. yeah. But I have a friend, like one of my best friends, has a daughter named Nadia, and I'm like, that's gonna be really close. That's close, right? Um, but her name would have been Navia, and I thought it was so pretty. It was. It was a Disney when, character. When she came out, and we saw her, it's like just Brielle just came out like that. That's her name. Well, like it just came. I'm gonna be honest with you. Whenever I took the pregnancy test with Brielle, the first name that came to mind was Brielle, and I looked it up, and the meaning is God is my strength. Mm -hmm. And I thought, like, it signified Perfect. everything that, like, we had went through, we had went through, like, up until that point. Like, you know, with your mom's death and different things like yeah, that. Yeah. And, and it just, it just she was together. the one who had the dream that Brielle would have been born later and all that stuff. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I did too, but after his came, mom had the dream. It just came all together perfectly. So, it just, it was just, Yeah, when we name. saw her, we were like, okay, she looks like a Brielle. Mm -hmm. We literally named her in the operating room. 
and uh <laughs> we were looking through pictures the other day and xavier started laughing he was like why does she look like that because <laughs> brielle was crying and she was all full of stuff and xavier just thought that was hilarious for whatever reason yeah he's silly he, he he's was so crying good. laughing i mean in tears he thought that was hilarious i'm like that's how baby looks when they come out and he thought she looked so funny <laughs> she did she didn't she went through a little stage. She wasn't. She was a cute newborn, but then she had like after a couple of weeks with that baby acne, so she looked like a little turtle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all like our babies went through that little turtle stage. Like nah, that. Nah, I think that's just that we we no, a clown, but nah, man, don't try to handle my baby. She looked like a little turtle. <laughs> yeah, she did. <laughs> all of them went through that stage where they were born and they were really cute. Like we had really cute newborns. Like say first day, first you know. But by that second week or so, oh, <laughs> they go through yeah. a stage. They go through a stage. My baby. Yeah, man. They're all beautiful They're now. Grown, man. But you know those newborns go through Kids a stage. Fast. We're gonna definitely we're gonna fit it in, guys. I think next video we're trying to put it in. We're gonna put yeah, it in and let, not, it, let it eat with us so y'all can see. She did just wake up, but she not camera ready. She no, not. She, no. I'm not about to play my baby like that and then look back on it later on and be like, I'm wrong for that. Nah, we gonna we're gonna we gonna make sure she's right. She just woke up, so I, I mean, the closest y'all probably could get close. is if y'all haven't seen her birthday video. We did post that on this channel. Yeah, that's but, old, though. But I know from that point to now, there was another she one we showed her at the end. She she has changed a lot since her, her Brielle, birthday video. Real, it's out the way, man. It's my baby. We she have to we have to plan to show her next video. Yeah, I know everybody be asking for it. Like they still be asking mm -hmm. for it, so. We'll and the her. boys too, because I know, or at least let them come say hey. Because Zayden, when we're filming, like he goes and he plays Fortnite. He's oh, not he'll watch interested. His, oh, he'll watch his brother and sister. Oh, he's he's not interested in being in the video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's still that age guy. He's like seven, going on eight. He's like he's in his own world. He like what he like, and he just that's what he do. Like he just stay in that. So this is the thing, though. I struggle with him playing the game as much. I don't like him playing the video games all the time. Because what are they doing? Some game. I don't like him having that much screen time, but then I try to like be lenient because he's a straight A student. Like Zayden's grades are literally like all A's with the exception of like two tests. No, they're still A's. Mm -hmm. All hundreds with the exception of like two tests. That was like 90. One is like a 90. Three. Three and one of them was like an 89. 80, 89, right. And that was because there was a glitch on that test. Mm -hmm. And she did fix one of them, but the other one she just didn't. Mm -hmm. That wasn't his fault. Because he actually knew the answer, but I didn't trip. I'm like, it's still a good grade. I really didn't fight for that that extra. Because I'm like, it's really not going to make that much of a difference. Right, he's, right. In the, he's in the second grade. I'm like, if, I, if he was like fighting for a scholarship or something, I'd have fought for those points. But I'm like, right. whatever. So um, he makes really good grades. He does what he has to do. I just don't like all that screen time. And like, I try to like lay off and just let him, but... I don't know. Am I tripping? Yes, he makes great grades. Yes, he's a good kid. But I also don't want him playing the video games all the time. And CJ's like, well, if he makes good grades, just let him play. Yeah, but sometimes, like, you know, days I tell him he can't play. No, stop. Bro. CJ will let that boy play from the time he wakes up till like uh -uh, no. 10 o'clock at night. No, no, no. Yeah, you do. Uh -uh. No, for <laughs> real. Not a problem. Not the time we wake Yo. up. No, he got days where he don't play. Or he got to get on at a certain time after he didn't. And if I'm sick and I'm in the read room. Read or did something. Or, what did he read? Or, I made him read. No, I'll do his work. I'm saying because he got the reading part mm -hmm. a lot that he, um, I want him to focus. Okay, yeah, he does have to do his schoolwork in between. But like, okay, so, but we were on Christmas break. He just started doing schoolwork again. Right. All those days on Christmas break, that boy played that game all day. He did play everything. Okay, yeah. Oh, he did. All day. But you know it was. We was busy too. Right? That break time, we was, it was. We were busy. We were busy with orders, but. And that, after Christmas, I mean, Christmas Day, and then after Christmas, we we was just chilling, recover. We was just trying to yeah. relax, you know, trying to regroup. You no, know what no, I'm saying? That comes, but, I'm not a strict parent, but I just because okay, I just feel like things are coming easy. He's always been an advanced child, and things are coming easy to you now, and that's great. But there are certain habits I want him to develop while he's young because what's going to happen is at some point in time you are going to feel challenged and I don't want you to resort to like video games at a time where you feel stressed. I want you to be able to push through and I want you to have the skills you need to be able to like study and figure it out and like I was I don't want to project but I was that kid where everything came easily at first mm -hmm. and then because of things going on in the home and other stressors. Once I did hit that challenge, 
it was easy for me to become frustrated because I didn't have any other way to deal with it. Mm -hmm. I don't want the game to become so addicting that it's like, this is my outlet, this is my only outlet. I don't know how to push through. And I don't know. Not that he's going to grow up in the same environment that I did. He's not. But I don't know how to explain it. I just want him to... I want to teach him those study skills early. Like, I get it's easy for you yeah, now, right, but it yeah. may not always be easy. Because he saw, like, okay, with um, your friend, little girl, like, even third grade, it's going to be more work. You know, yes. every grade, I told him, every grade you go up, it's going to be more work. It's going to mm -hmm. be no more. It's going gonna, it's gonna to increase, you know, mm -hmm. homeschooling now. He, and he adapts really well to those challenges now. But yes. I want him to always be able to adapt to those changes. And I don't want him to, like, um... I just don't want his only outlet to be video games because you learn so much by reading. I want him to have a love for reading too. Right. And he loves math more than reading. I can say that. He, he does. He read, but he loves math. He's that kid. When it comes to reading, he'll read, but like he. he I need him to love reading he, too, though. He enjoy. He enjoy. Because I used to hate it. He enjoy math like he. And like I, I think we said in the video, like the boy blow me away the way he is with math. I'm like at his age. Yeah. The problems that they give him and how he they sometimes they'll say like they want you they want him to do three ways. Uh, the last one they'll say mentally or try mentally, but mm -hmm. they'll they'll first say do you know like the little disc, the little charts to put the place values for yeah. hundreds. He's things way and better at math than I. But he but he he'll, he'll be like, oh, do I have to do that? You know the, yeah, the, the thing. Like, oh, just do it mentally. Like if I get the answer, I'm good. I'm he like, doesn't want to have to like show his work because he already has an answer in his head, and it takes him longer to stop and show his work. He rather just like, write the answer. So I'll still be figuring it out. And he's, <laughs> no, and hey, he's, real talk. And I'm pretty smart, and he's it, pretty smart in math. And he. Math is not my favorite, but like he, I can, you know, I'm good. He, he a beast. Like I'm not gonna lie. Like she even had a friend. Like he was like, oh, let me see, let me see. He was like, Zayden, come see. He said he came out. Zayden tried to. Play no, 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 him. no. I'm talking about the, but the very first time he was serious because yeah. he told him a big number, like a uh, big number set. Mm -hmm. And Zayden, like how he do, he was like, mm. he look around and guess because he's doing his head. Boom, he gave him the answer. Mm -hmm. It was correct. Then he gave him another. One. Then Zayden just say something crazy because now he kind of like, I'm playing. Like, yeah, I ain't trying to do that right now. Yeah, I'm playing. He was playing like with their daughter and then the next time he just gave like a bogus answer and I just looked at him like, really, dude? But he, he didn't want to Yeah, he was like, uh -uh. But, um, but like, guys, some of these problems are like... And I'm going to be honest, like, for any of you guys, y'all probably know too, your kids homeschool or just coming up and like, they do it differently. How we will find an answer and uh get it they, I mean, I understand they want him to do it this way. And I can see it, like, doing it with him. But I'm like, man, I can see how some parents would be like, like, on the comments would be like, bro, it's hard for them to help these kids. Because, I mean, we learn a certain way, but how they want these kids yeah, to learn it now? Yeah, core. It, I don't like it'll it. It'll throw me off. You'd be like, well, why? You got to go through five steps when, back in the day, one, two steps, you, you got your answer. They want them to do five, like, three, four don't extra steps wrong. to find out. I understand it. I understand it, but... Because I used to, I used to, like, I would hear parents talk about it all the time, and I was worried. I was like, oh, I hope, like, I'm never at a point where I can't explain it to them. Right. But I understand it, but I don't like it. I'm just like, what's the point? That's what I don't like. I don't but, like and I gotta sometimes, you know, scale it back, because I try to teach him, or I show him, or try to explain to him how I learn, I and I can't. Ways. I'd be like, okay, nah, they want you to learn like this. So I sometimes gotta make sure I'm doing it according to, you know, how the common kind of core is. I've shown him the other way, because he likes to know different ways to do it. I've shown him my way, and I'm like, but you're on the test, you're gonna have to do it this way. And so when I showed him my way, he was like, why can't we just do it like this? I'm like, I don't know. That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> like, I told him a little trick. Um, and one of my teachers back in the day told me, like, when it came to, let's say, big subtract, uh, subtraction numbers. Like, just for example, if they had 25 minus 9, but just to do it how you you would subtract. But he would be like, okay, if, if it's easier, since we're getting into subtraction, since you'll kind of know your addition a lot, mm -hmm. use the 9, the bottom number. Okay, how many, what number could go into 9 to make 25? And then that'd be it. Like he made us. It was weird, but a lot of people started. But it getting, worked. But it worked for a lot of people. Like it was so odd. You see what I'm saying? He'll be like, twenty five minus nine. But then it'd be like, okay, what into nine makes twenty five? What number? And some people could add that up quicker than say subtract the twenty five and nine. It was weird. You see, for me, it was weird. I just did, know that like a lot of it's got, always one number less than ten. Right. And that's how I always. So I'm like, okay. That's what I'm saying. It's, I, it's all kind of different ways. It's crazy. But, so, but yeah, I'm just like, okay, 14. Like, that comes to me. Any number minus 9 is but, easy but, to me because I'm always, I'm like, it's always going to be one number less than 10. 10. Right. I and don't know. Just like, okay, 
For example, I know we. I don't know if we boring y'all guys. I'm we sorry. probably are. I'm sorry, we ran. Away. <laughs> but okay. no, like how they say it, like when he do his um his urn on, online, how they're showing mm-hmm. the same as a nine. They'll be like, okay, we're on up to the nearest whole number, or it, like the way they do it, I can see that mm-hmm. and try to, I guess, to help the kids. But I'd be like, bro, you're going through a lot of steps I just know. to get the and like a lot of more steps to get the answer. But I know some of y'all probably want to see my bump. It ain't that cute. It's not like one of those little cute round bumps, but here you go. Now, if it's looking funky in the video, I'm deleting it. But, you know, that's, that's where we at right now. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> I mean, if it is, because the bottom ain't quite rounded yet. I mean, that gut had I never completely... really, I mean, all your pregnancies, I never know you'd have this big, perfectly round. It was perfectly round for with, Xavier, uh, Xavier, I mean, Xavier. And it was perfectly round for Brielle, I think. No, not Brielle. Don't do it like that, though. No, no, that, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> but I still had a stomach that I had <laughs> even completely worked off yet, so it ain't completely round at the bottom yet. It's getting there. Oh. It was a, it was like a ball for Xavier. Zayden, I was wide a little bit, but for Xavier, it was like a round ball. Ball, yeah. But I didn't gain. I lost thirty pounds. <laughs> All I had was baby for Xavier, and I lost twenty five pounds for Brielle. Oh, that's how sick I get, y'all. Yeah, it was this one though. Thirty pounds with Xavier. That was crazy. That was guy. miserable. That was that was. Even like, him, that boy, back to learning. He gets so bored. Like we got the kindergarten curriculum. We bought a kindergarten. He's technically, he should be in pre-K, but we bought the kindergarten curriculum for him mm-hmm. to try it out because we kept him home. Not necessarily because of COVID, but we kind of didn't see the point of like keeping Zayden home and then like not sending Xavier. I mean, but sending Xavier because we know he wouldn't want to go if his brother wasn't gone. So we bought a kindergarten curriculum for him, and even he's like, "All right, yeah, like he, what's next?" <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, he be. Yeah. Xavier be like, bro. He get he get tired of it, like the same thing over and over. And like he doesn't a, like repetition, and like on and this particular curriculum, it's like eh, 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 as an igloo, mm-hmm. as an igloo or whatever. Mm-hmm. And he doesn't like. But that. they might do that like two, three days straight. Yeah. When they do like they phonics and stuff. Maybe it's like, we should skip through. That's what he does. That's what I'm about to say. He's so smart to where he saw me like we had stopped one time and I had to go back, so I had to skip to the the part of the video. So he started. He saw that. Now, if I put the video on, it be like, okay, Xavier, I'm going to do something. Just go ahead and watch a video, do what your teacher said. Yep. I I went and I came back. I looked. He looked back. He didn't see me, but look, he, he took the mouse. <laughs> the boy went all the way to the end, like maybe a minute to the video end. Then he waited. Then, <laughs> Daddy, I'm done. I'm like, bro, I was going like maybe three minutes. Like, stop it. That's a whole 20 minute video. A 20 minute video. But I'm done. It's not like a live <laughs> teacher, so, yeah, so you like, know. I got to log yeah. on. He do it. Um, it's like pre recorded. Yeah, it's pre recorded videos. Just gotta go by, you know, in the workbook they'll tell you each day what lesson. And it's what a Becca, and a Becca is yes, good. Yes, Becca is good, yeah. But they do teach you, like you know, they they have to. They have. They don't know what level everybody's at, yeah, so, so they start. They slow. start like you don't know anything, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. But you know, he knew his letter sounds. He knew his, um, you know, he knew all of that. So he at one point was starting to read, but I didn't keep it up because I need, I need to do better. I didn't keep it up, but he'll be reading before kindergarten. Mm-hmm. Zayden was reading early. Xavier had started reading early. I just didn't keep it up because of getting pregnant again and being really sick and then having Brielle. I slacked. I'm not going to lie. Because Zayden was reading at, started reading at two, was <laughs> fluent at three. Xavier started at three, and then I didn't keep him going. So that's my fault. Now he's four, and I'm like, but you're going to be good because, like, you, you'll be reading about kindergarten. Mm-hmm. Like, he'll have that head start as well. Um, but, yeah. And he's been doing great, guys. Xavier, um, we probably said, I know we said it in other videos, how like he was vaccine injured, and but he he's in came, he didn't came a long yeah, way. Yeah, he he's had doing, a speech delay, too. He's doing well. From, that, like, from that, it was related to that incident. He had neurological side effects and all that. Yeah. He had a horrible reaction to the DTAP vaccine. His speech and teacher just recently when I took him this Friday that just passed, she was like, wow. Like she takes you home. She was yeah, like, she wow, she could me. see. Ask some questions, full sentences. Mm-hmm. We noticed it at home though. Like he, you know, and it's good to see. It do the it do my heart good. I cried. Yeah, man. I cried a little bit. We know he still got, you know, we still got a ways to go, because, but he Let me tell you why I cried. Because before I didn't cry when you told me that, but I w- I had a dream like a week ago. Where I told you that he was in kindergarten and he came home and he was explaining everything that happened during the day right. in like full sentences and he was playing with the other kids and he was just 
like you know full sentences and like just i don't know like the intelligence part i never had to worry about he was very ahead academics always but that speech delay was definitely a result of the, the um the, the issues he had mm -hmm. and it was due to aluminum toxicity because that particular vaccine has a lot of aluminum a ton of aluminum in it and it caused neurological side effects which were tremors and even mm -hmm. though we got rid of that we didn't keep detoxing him at the time but we did give him treatment through right. a naturopathic doctor right. um and that helped that stopped the tremors but i didn't realize that it um it had affected his speech so temperament too we feel like oh yeah well he was oh. the temperament he was frustrated because he couldn't express, express himself. himself and but, now notice he's a lot calmer yeah. because now you know and he still got something to work through but like you said he he didn't came a long way guy and like god yeah. is good man that's all i can say god is good for so, impressing on her heart you know as his mom and leading her in the right direction the things to do and, oh no it wasn't just me because when we went to bring him that to bring him to get that vaccine at six months old I had a bad feeling that morning and you woke up because you had a dream that he was not he wasn't responsive no, I did. so we waited and with me i guess you're more in tune with like i guess understanding dreams me sometimes guys would be i don't know it'd be vision dreams sometimes but i kept i don't know i just he had a dream that xavier yeah, was not I, responsive I just felt as like we I were calling him. his name i had to drag it out of you because i'm like cj if so because i said we need to um set his appointment so basically y'all we probably been rambling forever so basically um Zayden had a horrible reaction, our oldest, yeah. um, when he was four months old. Same freaking vaccine, DTAP. Zayden had a fever of 104.7 and screamed for eight days straight. Now, do you know how terrifying that is for your four-month-old to be having a fever of 104.7? I was in nursing school at the time. And I remember crying. I was praying over him. I was researching called a doctor they didn't think it was from the vaccine i'm not gonna lie his doctor seemed terrified um but he didn't come out and tell me mm -hmm. but the doctor on call said it's no way it could be from the vaccine most definitely was that's always um, generic answer they don't learn about that in medical school like talking not even in nursing school and from doctors that i've heard from what they learn about vaccines usually they have to learn on their own because all you're really taught in medical school about vaccine is basically uh, vaccines is basically the schedule maybe potential side effects that are considered very mild but they don't have like a full course talking about what could happen, like some of the injuries and all, like from what I've heard, I don't know. But anyway, his doctor who was like, I don't know where he was from, but he wasn't born like in the United States. He was a little more honest than some of the other doctors we've run into. And he was like, he looked terrified um, when I did go see him. Man. I knew something was wrong. But anyway, they didn't scream for eight days straight. I remember just nursing him constantly and praying over him, and he snapped out of it, but you, his did temperament... You know, did you know at the time how they said uh, nursing him, I guess, somewhat would have helped him, like having a breast milk? Did no, you know it was more instinct at the time because mm -hmm. I hadn't started doing my research yet. Right, right, right. It was more instinct, but I knew how good breast milk was and how healing it was for babies, but... Um, eight, 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 eight. So I remember going to school, and I talked to my nursing instructor, and she was just like... Um, follow your gut. She was like, you know your baby more than anybody else. Do not let these people give him all of that at once. Right. She was like, at least try a Break. delayed schedule. Mm -hmm. Try breaking it up. She's like, because it's, it's a lot all at once. And I mean, some people, children do fine. Mine did not. So he he was a very laid back baby, but his temperament definitely changed mm -hmm. after that. Yeah. He, as smart as he is and as advanced as he is, he always has been like that, but the laid back chill baby like was gone like he was never that i don't know i don't know how to explain it he just was he became more fussy and like upset after that he probably had like gi upset because it can irritate you it can cause inflammation in your gut and all kind of stuff i didn't know that yet so when i started researching what was really scary is that that fever that 104.7 seemed to be the magic number and a lot of kids who did have a fever that high usually regressed and were never the same after that and thankfully, Zayden was like these children usually regress into like some type of like um, mental delay and not responding to their names and all that stuff. And like, mm -hmm. yeah, and are later usually diagnosed with some type of like, you know, mental delay and stuff. And, you it's know, bad, so man. thankfully, it's a sad, it's a sad thing, yeah, man. so that didn't happen with Zayden. But when Xavier was born, we automatically started um, him on a delayed schedule. 
But every time he would get his vaccines, he would get really sick. Like, I mean, ear infections, this, that, like. And later on, I found out that that was just kind of like his body showing that he couldn't tolerate them. But I didn't know. And um, when it was six months, when it was that time for that six-month appointment, I because I delayed them, you didn't have to always like wait for the doctor like you can call and be like hey is a nurse available and you can bring them in whenever you're ready and the nurse would just give them an injection you know because i would go to all the wellness visits but i wouldn't always give it at every maybe i give like at a time like i give maybe one at one wellness visit and then i go back like a few weeks later or a month later and give another one you know what i'm saying like we spread it out y'all so at six months cj was like no i don't think we should uh we shouldn't set the appointment to let him get any more. So I didn't. And then, uh. Yeah, because I drew that kind of free now. Yeah. So I had the bad uh, feeling about it, but I thought I was just being ridiculous because, as far as I know, Xavier had never had a bad reaction. So, um, every time he would get sick, I would just kind of chunk it up as a coincidence. Like, well, maybe he picked up something in the doctor's office, or maybe. You know, maybe it's because Zayden was at Mother's Day out and he maybe picked something up, like, you know, over there. I don't know. Yeah, I was listening playing, to the kids. Yeah, playing and watching the video or something. So, I, um, but no, um, his little body couldn't tolerate it. And um, so I had the bad feeling. I woke up. Um, I told CJ, let me, I'm going to call this morning and see if they can take him, you know, give him his vaccines. Because I thought I was just being ridiculous. And he was like, no, he doesn't need that. And I was like, why did you, you know, and he didn't answer me. And I was like, look, if you had a bad feeling or a dream or something, you need to tell me because I woke up with a bad feeling about it too. So that's when he told me he had a dream that Xavier was unresponsive after getting vaccinated. So I was like, okay, no. So we waited. We went to his nine month appointment. And the doctor was like, well, why didn't you guys come and get his six-month vaccines? And I was just like, you know, we just had a gut feeling that we shouldn't. And it was like, I'm, I'm a firm believer in following my gut. And we're just going to wait. So she tried to be condescending. Like, well, whenever you guys aren't having a bad feeling anymore, you know, you need to come and get them vaccinated. She pissed me off. But I was like, whatever. So, um. That, that's, um, Paul, that's one thing I don't like. From anybody, I don't care if you're a doctor, expert, whatever. Mm -hmm. You can't, to me, you can't tell nobody about their kid when these mothers and fathers, whoever, when their kids 24-7, which is their kids, and they know how their kids are, mm -hmm. their temperament, how they are, then they might get a vaccine or something, or something like that, and then they change. I hate when people, well, no, it's not the vaccine, or like you said, oh, so what is feel it? like it's you, feel like it yeah. make, they make it seem like it's the parent when it's not, and I, yeah, I can't like, stand it. Yeah, like, what is it? If my child was totally normal before, and then something just all of a sudden you, switches off. You can't, bro, you can't. Like, what was it? <laughs> the only thing changed in their life was that. So, so yeah. anyway. So, anyway, so, okay, like. Okay, I'm a little red. I just hate that. No, I mean, it's frustrating, so she made me feel stupid, so I was like, all right, whatever. So, and I had done some research part, like, by that point, but I right. still didn't know what I know now. So then, uh, what happened? So we waited. And then at one year old, I was like, okay, I'm going to let him get, like, some of them because maybe I'm being ridiculous. So I let him get D-Tap and HIV. And he started having tremors, even while he was sleeping. And yeah, I was crazy. like, I that is at not work. normal. That was crazy. She sent me a video. Because you asked me if I noticed. I'm like, no, I never really noticed. Yeah, that. and then, like, I remember waking up out of my sleep, like, three times in a row, like, three nights in a row, between two and three in the morning. And... I would have a vision that something was wrong with my child and like the first day it was something that, that something was wrong and then I woke up and he was shaking the second night I don't remember what it was but it was again like a warning and then the third night I guess because I was in denial it was like a warning sign like you need to do something and then it showed me what would have happened and I don't want to talk about it it showed me what would have happened if I wouldn't have gotten him help and basically Xavier wouldn't be the Xavier he is today and I don't want to get emotional, so I'm not going to, like, go into details. But he would not have been the Xavier he is today. So, I immediately started praying. And I asked God to show me everything I needed to do to get him some help. And that's when I came across all oh, my earring. Oh. <laughs> I didn't have the um, the back one. So, that's when I came across um, all the research. Even um, medical journals. Um, I came across like even this one that that talked about um, 
these workers working in an aluminum factory and being exposed to um, aluminum and stuff like that and how they had the trimmers. I found all kind of information within 30 minutes. I was nobody but God. Like all this information and all this proof and just everything that like even down to the treatment and how people go about treating it. Got a second opinion from a doctor who definitely believed it was vaccine related. Yeah. Um, started getting him treated by a naturopath doctor. Trimmers stopped. Should have continued getting him treated. Should have actually done a heavy metal panel. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know. You know, at the time I thought, you know, the tremor stopped. He was good. But he had developed a speech delay, which was also due to that. And as a matter of fact, what I didn't know at the time, when the doctor denied it, she would not do an aluminum um, serum blood test, an aluminum blood serum test or whatever, which is what I asked her for after doing my research. Oh, yeah. His original pediatrician would not do that. She said, well, I can do blood work. Girl, you know that's not going to show anything. I needed something specifically showing me these heavy metals in his body, and she would not mm -hmm. do that. And at the time, it's we crazy. didn't. Yeah. And at the time, we didn't have a whole lot of money to do, like, a whole bunch of tests. But we did get him treated. We switched pediatricians because she was in denial. And I did not have time to play that game. Like, girl, yeah. I get that you want your bonus at the end of the year but for not, the certain not percentage not of vaccinated children, but not at the expense of my child. Mm. No. Oh, they got too many people. You can play this game if you want to, but not at the expense of my child. And what's so funny is I know somebody whose child still goes to her. Her child is Xavier's age, and she has never once pressured this lady into vaccinating her child. And they just don't because they don't believe in it. My children have actually had reactions. Mm -hmm. Vaccine There's only one difference between us, though, and I'll let you guys figure it out. Yeah. Like, we actually, you know. So, yeah. Like you said, it was proven. Vaccine injured, it was confirmed. I mean, you know what I'm saying? There's, so, yeah, one difference between me and my friend. It's crazy. Man. So, um, yeah, children, same age, same pediatrician, but it was an issue when we decided to stop. Right. So, we left, we go to another pediatrician, but um, basically, um, I ended up finding out that everything that happened to my child was actually in the vaccine insert. The little paper that comes that you in. don't get you don't get that it comes with each vial of medicine yeah, you don't get that which eat with each vial of vaccine and you can pull it up on a website um inserts i forgot the name of the actual website but i keep it in my phone so when i actually looked up the dtap vaccine all those side effects were in there so i had to like continue to um detox my child with a heavy metal detox mm -hmm. and if anybody should have any questions, I will answer that. What kind it is. Um, he threw me off. I'm sorry. <laughs> I continued to detox him. Um, and we put him in speech. But once we started this particular heavy metal detox, which was a heavy metal zeolite. I guess we'll say it. It was called actually TRS. Um, that's when we noticed a huge difference. Mm -hmm. In like speech. Huge difference. Right? Huge difference. Right. Like within the first week. And when she researched and she told me, she like, babe, all these proven and, you know, stories of a lot of people like after taking it or not that long after taking it, their kids speaking. Yeah. And like she said, she said, I'm like, hey, let's get whatever. He went from two word responses to like full sentences in a week. Like I said, man, you just got to thank God, bro, just to. Yeah. Mm. And he still had he's like still, oh, issues yeah. with understanding and all that stuff. And like, came he was he evaluated, did. and they were like, No, his only issue is speech, everything else is good. But I felt like he didn't fully understand certain questions, I felt like it was also comprehension. Mm -hmm. But now it's almost like he's trying to catch up for everything. Like, yeah. he asks so many questions now, it's almost he like does. something clicked. He does, and he really does. Like, yeah. We weren't <laughs> even consistent with giving him that detox, like, we started when he was like three. And we wouldn't even give him like the full dosage every day, which was like five sprays. Mm -hmm. Um, we give one here, two there, and then we gave it a break for like a, a few months. Mm -hmm. I think we did it for like how long straight? Like a I forgot 10 it. months straight. Then we took a break and then we started it again. And we just be like one spray here or like two sprays there or whatever. And, and, and it's so crazy it. about that spray. <laughs> It works for a lot. I thought she was lying. Oh, not lying, lying, but like just search that she was like, babe, I'm telling you. People said not just from detox and like you burn something or the, like she was saying all kind of things that it worked for. I'm like, nah, I ended up burning something. This is the something. thing. It's a heavy metal. It removes heavy metals. So whatever heavy metals can affect, like certain viruses can attach, attach to heavy metals in your body. So like if you reduce the heavy metals in your body, you'll get sick a lot less. It's so many different things that can help, but I don't know why. This stuff works for burns too. I do not know why. I'm talking about burning myself in a pot and On it was oven, red. It was stinging you. 
She hit it. She sprayed like, it, and it was instantly sore and, throat. Sore throat too. <laughs> and I'm not trying to like promote this. I'm no. gonna sell this. I don't get money from that. Right. I'm just telling y'all what worked for us. Right. But right. I okay. stalked the Facebook group for like a year before we even bought it. <laughs> right. And um, it has helped my child tremendously. I'm gonna get the bottle. Truly, like, like real talk, yo, like it really helped them. Like I can honestly say, and we not the type to just say y'all just. Nope, we will never tell y'all about something that, that we don't will, use. Yeah. This is it. It's not much left. I don't know if you guys can see, but that's it. It's called Advanced TRS Toxin and Contaminant Removal Support, mm -hmm. and just, that really helped my child. Yeah. And there's nobody but God that led me to these That's things so that did help him. So mm -hmm. I'm very grateful. Definitely. So anyway, you guys, we've rambled enough. And again, this is not sponsored. No. I don't get money from this. We buy that with our own money. Um, we just tell, we're just selling y'all work. We also did bentonite clay baths. Oh, yeah, with the um, healing Aztec clay because that's also good at removing heavy metals. <laughs> Brielle got snuck out, y'all. Here she She coming around. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway you guys yeah we've rambled enough yeah, um, so, and i'm very tired yeah me too I'm like that hey i was i was tired early because i woke up early but after eating this sweet now i'm like I'm you know after some time you be like bro, yeah the bread and the sweetie you're like oh man but yeah y'all we definitely gonna we'll try to get another video in. we will you know any questions you guys have once we post this one we will think about some things that come if I I you good Wait, girl <laughs> What, baby? If I'm too sick and I can't eat for the next video, I'll just drink some, some tea or something. Y'all hear it, huh? <laughs> you can't see it. Look, Zayda, you come to me. Your hair is not even done. Say hey. I don't want to do it. Bye, Bye, guys. All right, you guys. Well, that's enough rambling for us, but we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.